I think uh, government should never um, should never underestimate uh, nurses mm. and uh, must never forget that uh, you know we still have those banners at the front right. because as long as the banners are there we are still mindful of what we want government to do to nurses right. and uh, FNA has not been uh, sitting back and uh, relaxing after our meetings and all that because we know uh, the government has not uh, done what it uh, promised us to yes. do uh, they have not uh, come back to us in um, you know after our last meeting Bula and welcome to the lens at 177 in today's show we are at the Fiji Nursing Association headquarters here in Suva and um, we're here to discuss a serious issue facing our medical and health industry and I'm here with the president of the Fiji Nursing Association, Dr. Alisi Mundiniambola. Um, Dr. Alisi, uh, you know, we've been hearing about nurses leaving. We've been hearing about uh, nurses being unhappy with uh, pay and conditions. So uh, if I could just start off with uh, you explaining to us, what's the situation at the moment? Vinaka, uh, Felix. Um I think we have uh, said this uh, before. I'll just go back, uh, just go a step back. Right. That uh, you know these um, nurses uh, leaving the migration uh, issues. This started uh, well before COVID, right. and um, during COVID, this is what we have been talking about as um, you know as a stakeholder, as an organisation that uh, looks after. Uh, nurses, we we have constantly been alerting the the government through the media, and at every you know every opportunity that we had to tell the government to start uh, you know start addressing issues that would push uh, nurses out of the country because right. uh, we knew before COVID that the whole world was uh, around six million short of uh, okay. of nurses and uh, that was according to the to the WHO's uh, state of uh, the world state uh, of nursing report mm -hmm. it had told us before just before COVID it told us that uh, you know we have a global shortage of six million mm -hmm. And um, and we have been alerting the government to you know to to know this to read that report and to start uh, looking at uh, strategies start uh, plugging the you know the the gaps mm -hmm. start uh, looking after nurses but um, you know when COVID hit the you know what the nurses went through in COVID which was um, I would say that most of the nurses all over the world went through the same experience that nurses in Fiji went through but I think it was a bit uh, um, extreme for, for Fijian nurses because uh, we lacked um, you know the PPEs we lacked so many other things in the infrastructure and um, you know, so after COVID, we we realized and we expected the nurses would leave at any opportunity. Mm. During COVID, um, right up to post-COVID, nurses were not paid their due allowances. The risk allowance have been uh, mm. long taken out of their you know out of their pay. The, they were never paid their. Uh, over times right. and these nurses have been working tirelessly during COVID yes. you know frontliners doing the needful everywhere in the hospital and outside the hospital mm -hmm. and after COVID they were the ones who went out to do the, the vaccination right. you know after COVID vaccination we had other um, vaccinations you know the programs that we normally have with the Ministry of Health that uh, have been pushed back because of uh, COVID right. and and uh, nurses have just been uh, tired. And when you are tired, you are not uh, paid. You know, what else is there to do? Right. You know, we just expect our nurses to, you know, put their um, hands down and uh, mm -hmm. go. And, yeah, and uh, we have been uh, really disappointed that, um, you know, that the government has not uh, really done anything to, to stop uh, the are nurses. You, are you talking about the Manimarama government or the coalition government? Um, well, at that time it was the the previous government, right. the Marama government, and um, you know, 
I've always said that uh, even though we are a union, we I've always uh, said that we are not uh, aligned to any political uh, uh, to any government, we, right. yeah, we are not aligned to any political party or anything. Mm. All we do here is to try and make things better for our nurses, um, make them more visible, mm. uh, give them the you know the value, the acknowledgement that they deserve because they are, you know. Um, an invaluable workforce that you would find in any country. Yes. You cannot uh, achieve global health without uh, nurses. Right. You can't do that with doctors, you can't do that with other health uh, professionals. You need nurses to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask this because um, in June this year, Dr. Fong, the Permanent Secretary for Health, said that they filled most of the 800 vacant nurse positions. Then uh, in uh, also in June he said they're going to sort out the salary issue. Yeah. Uh, in the 2023-2024 budget, and then in August, FNA called for his resignation. So yeah. the call for the resignation does that mean, or did that mean that he had not fulfilled any of the things that he had said or promised? Yeah, Dr. Fong doesn't really, sometimes I think that he's, um, he doesn't really know what's happening within his house, within the Ministry of Health. Right. Um, there's so many things that, uh, that are happening and, uh, and sometimes he says uh, things that he doesn't, uh, or he has little understanding of. Right. Um, you know, to fill the 800 plus uh, vacancies created by the nurses who have migrated in that year is just, um, you know, is just stupid if I can call it that because yeah. we only have three schools of nursing right. even if they graduate uh, you know 200 which is um, uh, unrealistic if they graduate uh, 200 nurses each you still can't fill the, the vacancies and these are yeah. a brand new uh, graduates who need to still undergo uh, years of uh, internship, who will still need to learn on the job and they mm -hmm. have competencies that they need to meet to be able to be fully mm -hmm. registered and licensed to practice. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's unrealistic and uh, we did not really believe him when he said that. It was just stupid of him to, right. to say that. I think he was just trying to to talk about the, the numbers. Yes. Um, they have not uh, you know they have not done anything like uh, recruit uh, nurses from overseas or work with their uh, diplomatic um, relations with other countries like right. uh, some Asian countries who have surplus of uh, nurses who you know who can uh, help uh, Fiji. We used to have Korean nurses. We used to have Japanese uh, nurses. We have Chinese. We have uh, you know so many nurses mm -hmm. who could come. So many countries who could uh, help us, but they didn't do anything like that. Right. We are expecting them to do something tangible, something constructive and not just say okay we'll uh, fill up the vacancies. How can they do that? That's stupid. Right. Like he's, um, he's clueless about so many things. Yeah. And that's why FNA keeps saying you know he needs to go because uh, you know he's the person who is supposed to be accountable for the health service in Fiji and everything in Fiji is just falling apart. Yeah. Um, Public health, primary health has uh, broken down. Yeah. So your your banner outside, um, I yeah. notice we noticed that it hasn't gone down. Yeah. So you still want the permanent secretary to go. You still want the human resources. Yes, uh, the the banners will remain there until we achieve what uh, we want. Right. We want them to go. Uh, they have. Um, you know, their time or their visas have uh, all expired, they should go. Yeah. Uh, no one should be telling them to go. Any person in his or her right mind, right, would know his or her performance, right. that he has not uh, performed well. Everything else is falling apart. Right. If, um, you know, if the New Zealand Prime Minister can uh, resign just over some COVID um, issues, right. why can't uh, he go? Right. So many things have uh, happened that you know I don't really need to list out. Mm -hmm. People talk about um, you know the hospital services. We talk about um, unexplained deaths. That uh, epidemic in you know, so many epidemics are happening. It should not be happening at this time. Right. We don't know what he's doing. We don't know what his team in headquarters is doing. Right. Every disease that you can think of. Mm -hmm. 
we all have them. Uh, talk about the superbug, mm -hmm. right? the diarrhea problem in bar. Right. What is the answer? They're working on it, and people are dying. Right. Yeah. So, so you still stand by the statement? We still stand by that statement. The chief nurse, if I have to say this, the chief nurse who's sitting in the Ministry of Health has no uh, nursing structure in the Ministry of Health. Right. FNA cannot really identify the time when they change everything mm -hmm. because uh, she sits there as the chief nursing and midwifery officer and none of the nurses below her report directly to her. Right. They report through the medical offices. Right. Yeah. She doesn't have a budget. Yes. Yeah, but she's paid to be our chief nurse. Chief nurse. And no wonder nursing is in disarray because uh, I don't know whether she's giving any advice. Yes. Or whether she's mandated to advise anyone. Right. What is she okay. sitting there for? Yes. The HR, most of the problems that come to this office in FNA mm -hmm. has to do with HR. HR. From um, that, um, what do you call that, OMRS? Yes. Uh, yeah, that has a lot of um, uh, problems and um, we've noted lots of nepotism, mm. um, abuse of uh, process of OMRS. Um, many nurses who have left, even though they say that they're living for greener pastures, most of them leave because they are not, uh, you know, they are not recognized, they are not promoted, they, um, you know, they apply for positions and all of a sudden somebody comes from Suva to take up that uh, position right. or someone comes from Lombasa, someone two or three steps below her is promoted to her position. Yeah. And all these, um, you know, those kind of processes are blamed on the HR. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, so many I, things. Well, I, I want to talk about uh, the pay issue because, according to the permanent secretary, you know, and uh, and I understand you had a meeting here with uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Biman Prasad and uh, Employment Minister Agni Deo Singh and uh, Mr. Vosorongo in his acting capacity. And has the issues that you highlighted to them been addressed? Can you see any progress? Um, no, right. uh, which is why the banners are still there. Right. Uh, despite our meeting and the assurances from the Deputy Prime Minister and the three of them that things are going to be improved, that we need to give them time. We've given them uh, more than enough time. Mm -hmm. We gave them, you know, they blamed, uh, PS blamed, blamed it on an outdated uh, computer system or software that right. they have. Um, and uh, PM says that DPM says that uh, you know it takes time and and all those things. Right. I mean, we accept that because we know the you know how things uh, happen when there is a, a new budgetary allocation. We expect uh, things to go you know to be changed. People do overtime to be able to put things in place. But um, I think it's been too long. Too long. Yeah, and um, the, you know we one of those uh, days when I was asked, we we asked for the ministry to at least pay them on the first week of uh, August so that they would know the you know what they actually get from the budget and the second pay would be uh, would normalize eh? right. but they didn't they pay them in the second pay of uh, August right. yeah okay. and um, when that happened it was the end of August and we we found that there was this whole um, big uh, anomalies uh, those who, some of the nurses who you know who came down here, they, you know, their some of the salaries went from 28 down to 24. Some who are not supposed to receive anything received something. Those who were supposed to be you know to be given this uh, did not really get what they were yes. promised. It was all uh, haywire, okay. and we wonder you know the 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 competence of the people who are sitting there. Most of them have been there all their working lives. At least I know the accountant, when I was still working in the Ministry of Health, he's been there and they're still there. Mm -hmm. You know, by this time they should be experts in all these things, right. especially working with uh, nurses, the, the kind of salaries that they have and all that. Mm -hmm. They are not uh, brand new graduates from mm -hmm. USP. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't know whether they have a Q, you know, quality assurance process there that the uh, Ministry of Finance comes in to check that things are done correctly. Yeah. Because you know, these nurses deserve uh, better. We can't continue to lose them just because their pays are muddled up by Ministry of Health yeah. uh, staff. And all these are happening under the, you know, under the watch of this permanent secretary, the chief nurse who's sitting there, I don't know what she's doing, and the HR. Yeah. You know, it, we wouldn't be asking for anything more than the chief nurse just walking across to the accounts to see that the nurses get their pay, get the correct pay, get the right allowances and all those little things. Mm -hmm. If nursing is important, right? Mm -hmm. But it appears that um, to them, nurses are just uh, nothing. They are just uh, there to do the you know hard job mm -hmm. and just forget about them. I, I don't really know. I, I really can't understand how Fiji can continue to, you know, to, to disregard this group of uh, workers or professionals. As we, because they are the most mobile workforce that you have in any country. And Fijian nurses are well trained, they're well educated, they're well qualified, they're very highly skilled and any country would take them at any time. Well, we all yeah. know that other countries are taking them. We'll be back after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Bula and welcome back to the lens at uh, 177. Uh, we're here at the Fiji Nursing Association headquarters in Suva and uh, speaking to the president of the association, Dr. Alisi Mundini Mbola. Um, uh, doctor, you know, there was talk of nurses going on strike. And uh, as you would understand, uh, a lot of people are uh, fearful about uh, the impact it could have on the health sector. Um, people who have uh, sick members of their family were worried. Um, and, you know, there was just a, 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 almost a panic across the nation about uh, this supposed strike. So I just want to ask you, did the nurses plan to go on strike? Uh, well, it, um, I think at that, um, at that time, uh, the, the FNU did, sorry, the FNA did not, um, we were not really talking about uh, going on strike. There was no mention of uh, yeah. a strike uh, action as, you know, as a strategy to getting the attention of uh, government. FNA has always been a law-abiding organization. We, we are educated people, we know the rules of engagement, we know our, our constitution, we know the country's constitution and all that. Um, uh, I don't think we ha ever had any discussion or any any thought of going on strike right. at that time when we were waiting for the for the salary yeah. because we we contributed to the to the budget uh, paper right. and uh, we were expecting and the government has made an announcement that this is what they're going to pay the the nurses it was not what we expected but we were happy that we were getting the attention of the the government to remunerate uh, nurses right. to put them in their right uh, salary scales and the the bands uh, steps and all that um, and then we were just disappointed at that time when the, that strike uh, rumor came around. The FNA was uh, disappointed that uh, uh, government had not done what it promised to do. Right. So uh, before you know, talking about anything else, the Secretariat was just busy in uh, receiving um, our members uh, calls and even non-members who came brought in the salary scales to you know to be checked against what the, you know what because the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. before that pay had already issued um, a memorandum 
to all the all the nurses uh, itemizing everything that they were going to get in their pay. Right. So when their salary slips came, the, you know there was a big contradiction. There there were some nurses who were pro who were supposed to get things um, you know paid or not paid. Right. So there was this whole uh, uh, commotion and. This place was quite uh, busy with uh, mm. nurses coming in on during the weekend, uh, starting on Friday. They came and they brought in their pay slips. So the secretariat was calling every other parts of the country to send in their pay slips, mm. so that we can compare compare all the the different uh, yeah, categories of nurses and what they pay, what they get, and also compare it to the memo that was sent out by by the Ministry of mm. Health. Um, so yeah, we we did not uh, we did not say anything about going on strike. Right. So uh, when we had a meeting with um, we had a meeting with uh, three the PS, uh, the chief nurse, with the acting minister Mr. Vosarongo and the, the director of HR. That was one of the questions we asked them. Yes. We asked them, you know, where they got that idea from, uh, right. you know, that because they had already gone ahead while we were meeting here, looking at the pay slips and all that. The Ministry of Health was quite busy in trying to set up the contingency uh, plans for each of the hospitals, uh, look at all the, you know, the staff and mm. how many members, what's the percentage of membership of CWM member of the FNA, FNA mm -hmm. um, so that they could, um, you know, prepare for the strike that was going to happen on Monday. And that was something that we did not come from here. Right. So that question needs to be asked of the Permanent Secretary for Health. Yes. Yeah. So they were preparing for a strike that you did not even have? No, planned. we did not have any idea, right. but we never talked about a strike. Right. We know that there were dissatisfaction amongst the nurses. Some of them walked out of the hospital, but to come to Turek, because the the office for CWM is now located in Turek, right. and that's where they were going to get their pay slips. Okay. Yeah, they were not walking out or, uh, right. so or going on strike. Uh, just for the benefit of our uh, viewers, uh, when uh, an association or a union plans to go on strike, they have to first file a dispute and then hold a secret ballot. So, uh, Doctor, you telling me that there was no dispute filed and there was no secret ballot? No. Held because no. there was no plan to go on strike? No, there was no plan to go on right. strike. We were, you know, we were just happy, you know, happily waiting for the, for the pay for the end of August. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were waiting for our members to, you know, to tell us that they have been uh, given what they were promised to, you know, to get. And, mm -hmm. and uh, when they did not get what they wanted, they were supposed to get, that's when, you know, this place became quite uh, chaotic when nurses came in with their pay slips and, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, I just want, to want you to clarify something. Um, there is a perception out there in the public that nurses want more. Uh, but from my understanding, from my discussions with you and uh, with the FNA, nurses just want what they should be getting or what they are owed. Is that uh, Yeah. Um, I don't think uh, the FNA has, you know, has expressed that, uh, you know, that nurses need to get uh, more. You know more than what they are getting paid. That's up to the you know to the government and how they value nurses. All we were asking for was to give them their dues. Yes. These nurses have been working over and above what they expected to do in their line of work. They've worked before COVID. They've been overworked, underpaid. They worked 12 hours on end during. Um, COVID, some of them get separated from their families for three months, um, more than three months. Some even have broken families, um, family, you know, violence, children, um, nobody looks after their children if both parents are nurses or doctors. Um, yeah, and they were not paid. Apart from the, you know, the frontliners that were working during COVID, the nurses were not paid anything. Wow. Yeah. If they can pay the drivers, if they can pay the clerks who sit in um, one of the hotels doing the clerical work, getting their um, you know, COVID allowance, why not the people who actually go out there to do the testing and to do the, you know, the logistics of the whole? Mm. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's what we are saying.
we want them, want the government to remunerate the nurses, put them in the right uh, band, in the right skates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just, um, I don't know how to say this, it's just out of this world to, to have uh, 3,000 plus uh, nurses in Fiji, almost 4,000. Mm -hmm. And you have, uh, how many, seven? eight uh, nurses across the salary band for nurses sitting on four, step four of their right. salary schemes. Mm. Some of them work for 20 to 25 years, are still on band uh, one. What do you, how do you explain that? Right. So if, if the nurses were, you know, paid what they are supposed to get paid, would some of them have you know, stayed in Fiji? Would we have retained the nurses? We would retain most of the nurses. Right. You know, these nurses, um, these nurses, even the ones that we have now, these are the, the most, probably the most resilient of the lot because they have worked during the time, they continue to work uh, during COVID. After COVID, when most of the nurses have left, these nurses offered to do 12-hour shifts because yeah. there was just not enough nurses to go around to roster them on eight-hour shift in any hospital. So the nurses themselves asked to go on a 12-hour shift so that there's always one person on the floor. Okay? Yeah. And, um, you know, they overworked. They would be lucky to get um, three days uh, off because that's, uh, they're supposed to get three days off. Some of them would take a day off and in the afternoon, they would be called back to do another shift. So these are the people that are asking for overtime pay. Right. And some of them, most of those who have gone, have never been paid their overtime. No, you know, risk allowances. We've, we've had nurses, you know, getting abused, um, left, right, and center, St. Giles, uh, you know, that nurse who was uh, injured in that um, incident. No compensation, mm -hmm. no risk allowance. Last month we had a nurse um, taking a patient from uh, Yalombi down to Nadula and the, the boat capsized and she had to swim with her patient to a nearby reef to get uh, rescued. And uh, that was quite traumatic and yes. I don't think they, you know, we've been asking for this uh, maritime uh, safety equipment for nurses who work in the maritime right. areas. And uh, well, we are lucky that the nurse uh, survived with the patient. Um, those so, kind of things, so they are the not given the any... The nurses in the maritime areas do not have the equipment. They've been, they've been asking for these um, life jackets, a torch and those things. Mm -hmm. The ministry has not done anything about it. Those are, um, you know, some of, just some of the list of things that we've been asking. Right. Asking for, you know, for the ministry to equip our nurses with safety equipment. Nurses have to buy their own work uh, equipment like thermometers, uh, stethoscopes and things like that, even the plaster, the basic things that so we are... So they're not given that by the ministry. No, if the nurses don't buy them, the patients are told to go and buy their needles, buy their plaster, buy their dressings. We interviewed uh, Dr. Fong quite recently and he said the hospital does have everything it needs. And uh, you know that. Uh, yeah. So I don't know whether they are holding the those things or what, because mm -hmm. you you know if you have relatives who are admitted in surgical wards, mm -hmm. they would be coming with a list of things to buy. And that's today. Even yeah, it's right, still happening right now. now. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, uh, we've also received information that uh, in some of the health centres, um, because of the nursing shortage that uh, trainee doctors are now doing uh, nurses' duties. Is there any truth to that? I'm not sure. I don't think um, doctors can do nurses' work. Right. Yeah. Because uh, nurses can, only nurses can do their, their work. Right. Yeah. Uh, work in uh, health centers and nursing stations for nursing stations for nurses are very different from doctors. Doctors don't learn what uh, we teach our nurses to to do in those those areas, and that includes you know those um, stats, collection of data, right. uh, immunization, home visiting, mm -hmm. 
all those clinics that nurses do and so forth. So training doctors can't do our work. Right. If they are doing that work, then there's bound to be gaps in the, in the service. They're probably just looking at the patients right. and maybe doing an order dressing or right. so. And, and another issue of concern would be um, because of the exodus of uh, yes. experienced nurses. Yeah. What are some areas where there could uh, be real serious issues, you know, like uh, maybe in ICU or yeah. operating theatre where you don't have the level of, of experience? Are yeah. we having issues in those? Yeah, well, according to, to FNA, those are the very issues that are um, creating a lot of, uh, you know, serious uh, problems now. Um, We've been, you know, we've been talking about this uh, all our, all this time, yeah. how many years now, that the, um, you know, the exodus or the absence of this um, experienced, uh, qualified nurses will create these uh, gaps. One is uh, teaching, leadership, uh, the skills uh, gap. Right now we have not, and uh, the government is not even aware that the skills level has really gone down. Mm. So critical areas like uh, ICU, intensive mm. care, um, CCU, cardio, you know, cardiac uh, coronary unit, mm. the operating theater, um, even these big hospitals like CWM and uh, Lambasa. These are the places that will really feel the mm. the impact or the effect of the absence of this uh, level of uh, uh, skill and expertise in our senior nurses who have left. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, we have a generation of uh, nurses who who are very new. Uh, their, their experience would probably range from. Uh, one to five right. because uh, as you know as soon as they get on to four or five years of work experience that's when they are able to to go right. and uh, work outside uh, Fiji or go to SPN or other mm -hmm. another organization that would pay them uh, better and appreciate them right. Yeah, so Fiji is left with this uh, group of uh, nurses who, who are really teaching themselves as they yes. go or teaching each other and uh, that is a, a dangerous uh, situation to get into. Yeah. Uh, there is no mentorship, yes. there is no leadership in uh, clinical, uh, no teaching. So um, yeah, and that is not the you know the state of uh, things that we want our hospitals to be in, because this uh, hospital is a teaching hospital as well. Right. So you know if you teach uh, students from classrooms and you take them down, if the teacher is not there, you know to teach them about uh, you know clinical and things like that, right. then you are depending on the ones that are there constantly in every shift to teach the students the right things right. and uh, when the you know the staff themselves are you know just two or three years ahead of the student right. you don't really expect the teaching to be of any mm. more value than what you have already given them okay. thank you for the doctor mm. we'll come back to you after a short break mm. we were around when the deed was first signed we were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Bula and welcome back to The Lens at 177. We've been having a very serious discussion about an issue that affects all of us and uh, that is the exodus of nurses. Um, nurses are not feeling that they are appreciated for the work that they do and uh, also nurses feeling that uh, they are not being valued by um, the leadership that is in place. Uh, so that the issues get addressed with some level of urgency. And I'm speaking to the 
President of the Fiji Nursing Association, um, Dr. Alisi Mundi Um Doctor, we, we've already know what the issues are. We've yeah. spoken about them. We are now at a stage where you have informed government that uh, there are certain things that you want done and within a certain um, time. And my question is, what's the next step? What happens now? Do you continue to wait? and hope things work out better or are you going to are you prepared to escalate the situation yeah well i think uh, government should never um, should never underestimate uh, nurses mm. and uh, must never forget that uh, you know we still have those banners at the front right. because as long as the banners are there we are still mindful of what we want government to do to nurses right. and uh, FNA has not been uh, sitting back and uh, relaxing after our meetings and all that because we know uh, the government has not uh, done what it uh, promised us to yes. do uh, they have not uh, come back to us in um, you know after our last meeting with the uh, minister was wrong with the three uh, people from the Ministry of Health we were supposed to meet uh, 14 days after that uh, day to give them time to mm -hmm. you know to speed up things and uh, correct the, the problems and all that uh, so FNA is um, is already working on the our log of uh, claims, which also goes back uh, 10 years. Yeah. Uh, there have been uh, many things. I think it goes up into their 20s. Yes. The list of things, including transport, the uniforms, and so many things that uh, government needs to address. Yeah. And uh, and that's including the what's uh, stated on the the banner that uh, nurses deserve to have uh, good leadership. Yes. Uh, we need to have people who are qualified to be sitting and deciding for them at the Ministry of Health. Right. They need to be valued, they need to be paid what they deserve to be paid. Um, I think the time for, for meetings and uh, negotiating has already gone. Yes. Uh, we've had uh, so many years where our emails and our phone calls have not been answered. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, uh, we are tired of talking to the press and not really talking to them. Right. I think uh, FNA will uh, continue to pursue what we feel and what we believe is um, um, supposed to be paid for the, the nurses. Right. If uh, you know, if the Ministry of Health or the government is not prepared to honour its uh, obligations to nurses and to look after them, invest in them, then FNA will make sure that they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are prepared to, to do that and we are working towards uh, making sure that nurses get what they deserve to get. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, you've heard from the president of the Fiji Nursing Association and uh, you know I'd, if I were in the leadership I'd be concerned because this is a serious issue. It affects our loved ones, it affects us, it affects those that are sick in hospital and uh, while we uh, cannot do much as uh, people uh, in terms of uh, trying to get uh, you know the government to address the issues that the association has raised. Uh, when you're at a health center or hospital, uh, just remember that the people who are attending to you, as uh, Dr. Alicia shared with us, are overworked, um, unappreciated, undervalued. So maybe just a smile and a thank you would go a long way towards uh, helping them get through that shift or get mm -hmm. through that day. Uh, Dr. Alisi, thank you for speaking to us. Okay. And uh, we hope to have you back on the program again soon. Uh, like to, to our viewers, uh, please visit our website, www.fijitimes.com, uh, to watch this interview and other interesting stories, or also our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Vinatla. <laughs>